Hello YouTube and welcome back. Uh, today's video we're going to learn about multi-step binomial trees. Now if you haven't watched my other videos you probably should watch them first because essentially they try to explain uh, you know why we use binomial trees for pricing options and why they might make sense. So in the last two videos we looked at the portfolio approach and then the risk neutral approaches to building binomial trees which were just two different approaches to, to really getting to the same point. And there were some very interesting theoretical ideas in there, but uh, you know, in, at the end of both videos I pointed out that the problem was that we were in still quite an unrealistic scenario where we were saying that uh, we could build a tr we could price an option if we knew the two next steps in the price of the underlying. And of course the problem is that it's probably impossible to know the two next steps in anything. In particular, when we're saying there's only two possible outcomes uh, in a price over the next month period. So it was interesting, but we weren't really very realistic. So in today's video, we have to find a way of making all of that theory kind of work out and seem more realistic. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to build our, our risk-neutral binomial tree and just add some additional steps to it and adding more steps uh, really just involves doing the same calculation a few more times. It's, there's, there's no really additional mathematics involved here. We're just building more steps to our tree. And as you'll see, the formulas are all the same, but we end up with, with more possible outcomes, which is, will begin to make a little bit more sense and be more real world. So the two-step binomial tree, um, what we're going to do is we're going to build... Firstly, uh, uh, we built a one-step binomial tree in our prior videos. We're going to now build a two-step binomial tree. And once you know how to build a two-step binomial tree, the theory is the same for building a three-step, four-step, five-step, and frankly, as many steps as you want to binomial tree. Um, so all you have to do is you do the same calculation for a two-step binomial tree, but this time we're going to do it three times instead of once, okay? And what you do is you calculate the value of the furthest over uh, steps in the binomial tree. That gives you the U and D for the next binomial trees, and you just keep calculating them back till you get to the start of the, the tree, and that is the price of our derivative. So um, we're going to use the same formula we used before, which is the value of the derivative is the present value of the risk neutral probability time of an up move times the payout in an up scenario plus the risk neutral probability of a down move times the payout of the derivative in the down scenario present valued and so that's all we have to do and we just have to do it for each step of the binomial tree now one thing it's worth noting here is that when you see the formula up on the screen, the difference between this one and the last one is it says, you know, e to the minus or t2 minus t1. What that really means is just that we have to, we have to divide up the time, the life of the derivative. So we'll say if it's a one-month derivative and we're doing a two-step binomial tree, well, the time period for each step has to be half of a month. Um, and the reason for that is that uh, otherwise we'd be over discounting the, the derivative. We'd be making a mistake in our present valuing. So essentially, let's, let's take a look at an example and we will price our, we'll price a derivative. So we're going to use our binomial tree. Um, it's able to value both puts and calls. And so for this example, I think the last time we did calls, so this time we'll do a put. We're going to price an at-the-money European put with a strike of 20, and so it's at-the-money. That means that the underlying is also trading at 20. And we're going to use a two-step binomial tree where at each node the underlying is able to move either up or down 20%. The risk-free rate we're going to use is 5%, and so off we go. So the first step is simply to build the tree. So we much like uh, in the last video, we're just going to put in the information we have. So, step one, draw the tree. You can see the, the tree up there on the screen. And we write in all of the information we know. So we know that the underlying is at $20 right now, so we write that in. And we then know that it can go up by 20% or down by 20% at each step. So, 20 times 1.2 gives us 24, so we write that in at the next step on the tree. 
and then 24 times 1.2 is 28.8, so we write that in at the very top, at the up-up node on the tree. And then let's calculate the down and the down-down node. So 20 times 0.8 gives us $16, so we write that at the down node. And then 16 times uh, 0.8 gives us uh, gives us 12.8, uh, so we write that in again. Now, for the middle node, uh, the, we can call that either the up-down or the down-up node, uh, you take 20 and you multiply it by 1.2 and then by 0.8, or you can multiply it by 0.8 and then by 1.2. Either way, you'll come to the same number, which is 19.2, and so that's the price of the underlying in the, the middle scenario. So we've now got Last time we just had two possible price outcomes, now we've got three possible price outcomes. So at expiration, the underlying can either be at 28.8, 19.2, or 12.8. So the next thing we have to do is put in what the derivative will be worth at expiration in each of those scenarios. So it's a put option, so it's worth more if the price of the underlying falls, and it's got a strike price of 20 which means it only takes on value if the underlying is below the price of 20. So in our up-up scenario, the underlying is at 28.8, and we have the right but not the obligation to sell at 20. Um, you're not going to sell at 20 when you're able to sell at 28.8, so you would just uh, allow that contract to expire worthless in that scenario. So in the FUU, the value of the derivative or the payout of the derivative at the up-up node is zero. Then, in the middle scenario, uh, the underlying is at 19.2, and you have the right but not the obligation to sell at 20, so obviously you'd happily sell at 20 when the underlying is at 19.2, and the right to sell at 20 would obviously be worth the difference between 20 and 19.2, which is 80 cents. So we write that in, FUD, or you can call that FDU if you want to, um, is worth 80 cents. And then finally, in the down-down scenario, the underlying is at 12.8. The strike price of the put option was $20. So 20 minus 12.8 gives us $7.20. So we write FDD, the value of the derivative at the down-down uh, node, is worth $7.20. So that's all the information we need written into our binomial tree. Now what we have to do is price the option. So we then of course need to calculate P. So we're using the same formula we used uh, in, in the last video to calculate P. P equals e to the RT minus D over U minus D. So P is equal to e to the 0 0.05. We've made this a one-year expiration option, so we don't need to do any more with that. So e to the 0 0.05 minus 0 0.8 over 1.2 minus 0 0.8. And so once again, I explained in the last video that we're getting u and d from the magnitude of the up and down move. So it can either move up by 1.2 from, uh, what was it, uh, it moved from 20 to 24 per step, or it moved from 20 to 16, which to get to 16 you have to multiply 20 by 0 0.8, so that's where U and D came from. And when we do that calculation, we calculate that P equals 0 0.6682. Okay, so then we just do our calculation. Um, we say FU, so the, the value of the derivative at the up node rather than the up up node, the middle up node, is P times zero, which is the payout of the derivative at the up up node. Anything multiplied by zero is worth zero, so we'll leave that out and we'll just say one minus P, so one minus 0 0.6282 multiplied by 0 0.8, which is the value of the derivative in that middle node. Uh, comes to, one's present value comes to 28 cents. So FU then is 28 cents. FD then is calculated as P multiplied by 0 0.8, so P is 0 0.6282 times 0 0.8 plus 1 minus 0 0.6282 times $7.20, which is the value of the derivative in the down-down node, present valued at 5% for one year, 
gives us three dollars and two cents. So then we just plug our twenty-eight cents and our three dollars and two cents into the formula and do the calculation again. So p 0.6282 times 28 cents plus 1 minus 0.6282 multiplied by $3.02 gives us $1.24. So our put in this example is worth $1.24. So as you can see now, we've gotten more realistic with our calculations. We haven't gotten hugely more realistic. We've gotten a little bit more realistic in that we moved from saying there are two possible outcomes to saying that there are three possible outcomes. So that's a bit better, but it's, it's hardly amazing. It's hardly real world. But the beauty of this is that we can just build more and more steps into our tree. Now, you're not going to sit down with a, a pen and paper and calculate a massive binomial tree with a thousand steps. But luckily, computers are good at that, right? So you, you can either build a spreadsheet or you can code something up in, we'll say, C++. Um, to, to build as many steps to a binomial tree as you want to do. And just the more steps you build, the more time it takes to do the calculation. You'll also find that after a certain number of steps, it doesn't necessarily refine the price an awful lot more. So you don't have to build sort of 10 million steps to a binomial tree. But if we build more steps, what happens is we have more possible price outcomes. And the more possible price outcomes we have, the more it starts to look like the real world. Because while it might be really unrealistic to say that we know the price of, uh, of an underlying in one month's time, that it'll either be 70 or 30, like in our first example, it's not so crazy to say that over the next you know, second or microsecond, that the underlying will move up or down by, we'll say, one penny, like whatever one tick is on the underlying that you're looking at. And so once you move to in that direction, once you add in enough steps, you end up with an awful lot of possible price outcomes. And so as you can see up on the screen here now, this is a big binomial tree. And then you'll notice that there's only really one path that'll bring you to the left and right tails of, of that, you know, to the down, 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 down node, or the up, 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 up node. Um, but there's many paths that will bring you towards the middle. So what does that mean? It means that we're starting to look at, we're, we're essentially saying here with this binomial tree, with a big enough binomial tree, that the price of the underlying has a distribution kind of like a normal distribution. Now, we'll talk later in, in for future videos about actual distributions of stock prices, but the point of this is really just to say that we've moved in a much more realistic direction now. We've moved away from the idea that the price of the underlying can be at 70 or 30, and now it's essentially, there's a distribution of possible uh, uh, price outcomes for the underlying. And so now we're much closer to the real world than we were early on, but we've got all of the same sort of finance theory built in there. So now you can see how the binomial tree approach might not be so crazy that it might actually make sense and be a good way of pricing options. So we've got one little problem left that maybe has been niggling you is that even though we've now moved to lots of steps and lots of pro possible price outcomes, the question is, where did we get U and D from? You know, when we said it could move up or down 20% or up and down by whatever amount you want to say. Well, that actually is calculated from the volatility of the underlying. So early on I said that we really only need to know two things to price a derivative on, a, on a, an underlying, and that is the price of the underlying right now and the volatility of the underlying. So we get U and D from the volatility of the underlying, and here's the formula on the screen right now. So U equals E to the sigma, which is the standard deviation of the underlying, times the square root of time, and that's time per step in our binomial tree. And then D is just one over U. So essentially, we've now worked out that if we know the price of something and how much it wiggles around its standard deviation, how much it moves, we're able to come up with a reasonable price for a, an option on it, a derivative on it. And, and in fact, it doesn't even have to be something like a call or a put option. It can just be a payout. Like, so 
for example, if we said you'll get paid one dollar if it closes above a hundred and nothing if it closes below, or even if you got a dollar if it's above and fifty cents if it's below a given price, all we have to do is build a binomial tree, put in the payouts that you would receive from the derivative at those final nodes, do our calculations, uh, which we've just gone through. Uh, value it all, and that, that tells us the value of that derivative or that bet. And so that is binomial trees. And so our next video, we're going to look at how we can do even more with binomial trees. We're going to look at pricing American options. They're options where you're allowed to exercise early. So far, we've just looked at European options. So uh, see you tomorrow for a video on pricing American options using binomial trees. Bye.